Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician, and on this video we're going to take our first look at similar triangles. Now this is going to be a part of a playlist on a bunch of videos relating to similar triangles. But for this video, we're going to take our intro look at what makes triangles similar. Now before we get into that topic, we first need to define some key terms that we'll be using throughout these videos. And the first word that I want to talk about is the word dilation. Now for some of you who might be wearing glasses or have contacts, the word dilation might seem familiar to you. Because for many of us, when we go to the eye doctor, they dilate our eyes prior to the examination. And what they're doing when they dilate your eyes is that they're actually enlarging the pupil in your eye so that they can examine it. That idea of enlarging the pupil when you dilate your eyes is kind of the same thing when we talk about the word dilation in terms of geometry. We're not going to be dilating eyes here, but in a sense we're going to be dilating shapes. And the idea of making your pupil larger, we're going to be looking at shapes and either making them larger or shrinking them. So let's get a nice formal definition for the word dilation, and then we can talk about what it means. Now this definition is a transformation that produces an image that is the same shape but a different size. Now I want to focus on this word right here that I wrote, transformation, because this is not a new word to us. We've looked at other transformations in geometry, such as reflections, rotations, and translations. Those are three transformations that we focused on that would take the shape and would just change the orientation of it. Sometimes we would reflect it vertically, or we would rotate it 90 degrees, or maybe we would slide it eight units a certain way. Those transformations never change the size, it just changed the way the shape looked. Now with this fourth transformation that we're learning, dilation, it says that this is a transformation that produces an image. And the, the key part here is that it is the same shape, but a different size. So that means if we are dilating a triangle, that means we're gonna end up with a triangle, but it's just going to be a different size. Same thing if we dilate a square. That means that we will have a square at the end, but it'll just be a different size. So what I have here is a triangle for us to play with. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. I'm gonna paste an exact replica copy of that triangle. And we can see right now that this is the exact same triangle. The side lengths are the same. The angles are the same. And right now we would see that there has been no dilation because it's the same shape and it's the same size. It hasn't changed just yet. But now we can see as I take this shape and I start to enlarge it, now we see that we end up with another triangle that is the same shape as the original, but now it's a different size. We've taken that original triangle and we've enlarged it. Now dilations are not just about enlarging the shape, you can also shrink the shape. And we see now I'm still ending up with that same shape, that same triangle, but now my image is a smaller size. That really is what dilations are about. Now what I want to do is go ahead and define the very last term that I want to talk about. And that last term that I want to focus on is this word that we call a zoom factor. Sometimes we refer to that as a scale factor. And what a zoom factor is, is it's telling you how much we're going to be dilating our shape. So let me put that into context for you. This shape that we started with, the triangle on the left, let's go ahead and label some of the sides with different lengths so we can understand what it means to have a zoom factor. For example, I'm gonna label this side here four, I'll label this side five, and let's label this side up here eight. Now, if I were to tell you, the reader, that I wanna dilate that shape, 
I want to create this triangle right here and I want to dilate that shape with a zoom factor of 2. What that means is, is that I'm taking my triangle, my original triangle, and I'm multiplying the sides, every side, by 2. That's what a zoom factor is. So this 5 that we had started with, when I use my zoom factor of 2, the new image that's been dilated will now have that base of the triangle as 10 because the zoom factor is 2. I'm taking that shape, I'm multiplying the side by 2. And we're going to do that for every side here. So we have 8 here. Well, that 8, when I multiply it by 2, is now going to end up as 16. And I think we can guess that this left side of our triangle started out as a 4 and 4 times our zoom factor of 2 will become an 8. And so now we can clearly see that we have the same shape, but it's a different size. Every side has been multiplied by this zoom factor of 2. And that's what it means to dilate a shape. The sides are going to change. They're either going to get bigger or they're going to get smaller but they're all going to be multiplied by this same zoom factor. Now, let's go ahead and take another look at that. Let me go ahead and paste that image of that triangle that we started with. And I mentioned earlier, right, this is that original triangle, that we enlarged it by a zoom factor of two. Let's now think about what happens if I dilate it by a different zoom factor. What if I took this guy and I said I was going to dilate it with a zoom factor of one half? That means, again, that every side of the original triangle here is going to have a dilation of one half. So that left side here that is four, I'm going to take that four I'm going to multiply it by my zoom factor of one half, and four times one half will become two. So we see that the triangle has been shrunken in half, and that side that used to be four is now cut in half and is two. Same thing with this five. I'm gonna take the five, I'm going to multiply it by the zoom factor of one half, and we end up with this side being 2.5, which is half of 5. Finally, that third side was originally 8. Well, half of 8 would create 4. And again, we see that we now have that triangle where all of the sides have been multiplied by the same zoom factor. All three of these triangles are the same shape. They all started with this original triangle here, but they're all different sizes based on that zoom factor. Now the last thing I want to mention on this video, I think I've made that point, is that the sides are going to change. One key thing about dilations is that while the sides change, the angles do not. Let's see if I can just grab that triangle here. I don't think I can grab it, but what I can do is, let's go ahead and copy out that original triangle that we started with. And hopefully we can see that this original triangle, as I move it over here to my dilated zoom factor of two triangle, do we see that that top angle there is matching up exactly the same? I'm having some trouble lining it up. Maybe I can show it a little better with this bottom one. So hopefully we can see that that angle down on the bottom is going to be exactly the same. Same with this angle down here on the side all of the angles there are going to match up, including the angle here on the smaller one. All of those top angles there are matching up. So one of the key things about dilations is that while the sides change, the angles don't. So that means all of these angles here, all of these top angles in this triangle, they are actually the same angle. Same with this bottom angle down at the left. 
We changed the sides, but we did not change the angle measurements. Finally, we can see in this third angle here, all of those angles are the same. Again, I wanna kinda of drive home that point. Dilations change the size, they change the sides of the triangle, but they don't change the angles. All right, guys, so this video was just setting up these two definitions, the word dilation and zoom factor. And what we see here is that all of these triangles that we dilated, we would say that they're similar. When you dilate a shape and you end up with an exact copy, one's just bigger or one's just smaller, we end up calling them similar. And in the next couple of videos, we're gonna see how we can identify whether or not triangles are similar. It's that math magician, and I'll see you in the next video.